Jesus, we thank you this morning that Jehovah is your name. The mighty one of Israel is your name. The creator of the heavens and the earth is your name. Oh Lord, we worship you. We magnify your holy name. We give you your rightful place in our hearts, in our lives. In our plans, we exalt you high. High above everything else. High above every other kingdom. High above every dominion. High above every authority. High above every power. High above every name. High above our situations. High above our problems. High above our enemies. High above our friends. High above our nation. You are the Lord God. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. Your name is mighty. Your name is awesome. Your name is excellent. Your name is wonderful. Your name is awesome. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you for being in our midst. You are mighty in battle. And we declare this morning, whatever battle we are going through, we shall overcome because you are with us in battle and you are mighty in battle you have never lost any battle and we are not going to lose either because the lord fighteth for us it is the lord who fights for us and we thank you lord we magnify your name and we confess our faith in you we confess your power to overcome for us to undertake for us and to cause us more than victors to be more than victors through Christ who has loved us who fights for us thank you for the opportunity to hear your word this morning I pray that Lord you will take pleasure in speaking to us in revealing yourself to us have your way father I pray Cause your name to be glorified amidst us. And may we hear your voice in such a clear way as you use your servant, Joseph Malonza. Thank you, Lord of glory. We know we are going to hear you. And our lives will never be the same again. Even on this last day of the seventh month of 2022, Father, as we continue to focus on unto you, we know it shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. In the name of Jesus. We deliberately ignore every other voice. We deliberately ignore every other noise. Every other voice is noise. It is only the word of God that is voice. It's only the voice of God that matters. Yes. And we choose to hear and hear you only in the name of Jesus. Every discouraging voice, every disheartening voice, every voice that seeks to weigh us down, we refuse and we choose your voice. We focus unto you. We focus unto you. We focus unto you. And I pray that as we focus unto you, we will never be put to shame. Yes, Thank you, Lord, that you have walked with us as a church, as a fellowship, as individuals, as families. And we confess that 
Only you shall we continue to focus. Because none put their faith in you and were disappointed. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer, for granting it, and we receive by faith. In the name of Jesus, the church said, Amen. Amen. Shall we give Jesus a mighty clap? In the name of the Lord. Uh, this morning, as we continue to uh, share on the subject, the theme of focus, the month of July, today is the last day of the month, the last Sunday of the month, and we are privileged to have our brother Joseph Malonza sharing with us the word of God. Shall we give Jesus a mighty clap? As I welcome him to share with us. Amen. Amen. And let me say, it's always a blessing to uh, sit and also hear God speak to you through somebody else. Uh, yesterday morning, I was very encouraged. I got a very, very strong message from a former student of mine. And... Uh, uh, I, I, I think I will share it another day but I was very encouraged and so uh, our brother besides being one of us here I thank God that he's also one of my products outside here so it's outside there and in here and I'm so happy to have our brother minister to us let's open our hearts that God may speak and speak to us in Jesus' name. Welcome, brother. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Before we take our seats, can we uh, just tell the Lord to, to reign in this place? Kindly give me the key. Uh, Lord, we worship you and we bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, exalted is your name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Tell him you reign. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on You reign, you reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on Jesus, you reign, you reign, you ancient Zion, see, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are, you are mighty on your throne, you reign, you ancient Zion, see, forever and ever, you remain to be the same. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Holy, holy, you are mighty, oh Jesus. You reign, you reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are, you are mighty, oh Tell him you reign. You ancient Zion's king. Holy, holy, holy. You are mighty, Lord. You reign, Lord. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Holy, holy, holy. You are mighty on your throne. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Verse 1 to verse 8. Acts chapter 3 
from the first verse through to the end. Are we there, everyone? Okay, we read. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. This is verse 2 in NIV. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put uh, every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Mm -hmm. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Verse 4. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Then the last verse, he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Kneel the cross, kneel the cross, be my glory ever, till my rapture soul shall find rest beyond the river. Kneel the cross. Kneel the cross, kneel the cross, be my glory ever, till my rapture soul shall find rest beyond. Father, we thank you this morning for the hearing of your word, for the reading of your word. You are highly exalted, you are highly glorified. This morning, may you help us to focus at the cross of Calvary, to focus on you, Jesus. Even as this month ends and uh, uh, we've been believing, we've been trusting, we've been uh, uh, quickening our spirits for our focus. Lord, we pray that you may help us to be near the cross. We, you help us, O King of Glory, to be where you are all the days of our lives. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody celebrate Jesus as we take our seats. Amen. 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 We can take our seats. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to thank uh, the Lord for such an opportunity and for his grace. Uh, and even to the, to the leadership of the church and to our reverend for an opportunity to share the word of God this morning. This is the word of God. It is not my word. It is what God has put in my spirit to share with us this morning. Praise the Lord. 
And I pray that as we continue and as we come to a close, that something will have uh, changed in your life. The word of God, the entrance of the word of God, it brings light, it brings transformation, it brings a change. It is my prayer and I'm believing in God that when we walk out of this place, we shall walk out of this place are changed. We shall walk out of this place with a word. This word, you need to personalize it. It is not for your neighbor uh, because your neighbor is not here. It is for you who is here physically and you who is following online. This word is for you this morning. And no, uh, God doesn't send his word in vain. And as the Bible records that just like rain falls down, something must happen. The seed gets that uh, the moisture, the water, and it sprouts, it germinates. And I pray that in the name of Jesus this morning, something will grow, will germinate out of our lives, and we will walk out a uh, changed people and a changed church. Say amen. Uh, from where we've read uh, Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 1 to verse 8, it is what God has put in my spirit. And uh, uh, sometimes I... I I wonder how God connects us and connects our spirits. Uh, here as a church, you where you are seated, is your heart connected to the heart of the Father in this place? Is your spirit connected to what is happening in this place? Just ask yourself such a question as we begin uh, uh, the sermon. Is your heart connected to what is happening on this altar? Uh, because uh, allowed me to say this reverend it's not like uh, I went to reverend and told him I need a chance to uh, to share the word of God but what I thank God for is anytime the Lord puts a word in my spirit uh, it doesn't take time reverend will uh, contact me to share the word and I know we are connected other than being a great friend I know that my spirit is connected to his spirit because I have submitted to this altar. I have submitted to him and not to any other place. Praise the Lord. Uh, this lie must stop. That is the message that uh, the Lord has put in my spirit to share this morning. That this lie must stop. Somebody say, this lie must stop. Yes, tell yourself, this lie must stop. Amen. And what do we mean by, uh, what do I mean when I say that this lie must stop? Uh, we are saying that it comes a time that we say no to living a life of a lie or to living a lie. It means we say no to living a life of contradiction. Living a life uh, of the opposite of what is expected. And that is the situation we find ourselves in. Most of us believers in church, in Pentecostal churches, we find ourselves that we are in a situation whereby the life we are living is the life of a lie. We are living a contradiction. We are living the opposite of what uh, is expected of us. We are neither here nor there. We are neither hot, we are not, neither, uh, nor cold. And you know what the Bible says? Uh, it says that it is better you be hot. I desire that you be hot. And at this time, this century, the Christianity we need at this time, we need somebody who says that I will be hot for Christ. I will be hot uh, for the kingdom of God. So a life of a lie is one who is neither hot nor cold, neither here nor there. A life that cannot be explained clearly. When I try to explain your life, it doesn't come out clearly. There are some contradictions that I see in your life. There are things that I see uh, that are the opposite of what me, who is explaining your life, I expect. That is the uh, life of a contradiction. And this morning, uh, we are saying no to this life. We are saying no to this life of contradiction in the name of Jesus Christ. We are saying that whatever is expected of us, whatever people are seeing in us, may it be so. May it not be the opposite. May it not be the other way around. When people look at us at all uncles, may they see that these we can try and explain their lives. Somebody say amen. 
And uh, uh, there are several examples I will give that uh, we will share as we continue regarding living a life of contradiction or living a lie. And number one, we are going to begin with your name. The name you identify yourself with or the name that we call you. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Joseph. Now I want to look at my name and I ask myself, does my name, or, or rather is my name, uh, does it show the character of who I am? If you are Joshua, if you are Cyrus, if you are Elijah, does your name portray, does your character show Joshua in you? Now, Joseph, when I look at the name Joseph, Joseph means uh, that the Lord shall increase, the Lord shall add, the Lord shall multiply, the Lord shall enlarge. So I will look at my life and I ask myself, Joseph, are you living a life of multiplication? Are you living a life of enlargement? Are you living a life of addition? Or you are living a life of subtraction? You are going back. Uh, there are drawbacks. There are failures in your life. And your name is portraying one who the Lord says, you shall increase, you shall multiply. And when I evaluate my life and I find that I do not, uh, uh, or rather my character is not that of someone whose life increases. Then I, I, I say, I tell myself that I am living a lie. That I am living a life of contradiction. Am I Joshua? Uh, uh, when, when, when the name Joshua is mentioned, you, 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 uh, you think about uh, Jericho was falling. So Joshua is a fighter. Joshua is someone who brings Jericho walls down, regardless of the situation. Am I living such a life? If I am Daniel, Daniel is one who prays to God always. When the situation, when the king has said, no prayers, Daniel is there. He is praying to God. He enters his closet. He opens the window. Three times a day, he prays to God. And Daniel went thrown to the, to the den of lions. The Lord shuts their mouth. Does my, if I'm Daniel, does my life look like Daniel? If I am Elijah, does my life look like Elijah? Hmm? When people look at me, do they see the God of Elijah who answers by fire? The God who challenges, or rather a man who challenges prophets of Baal. A man who challenges people that are unbelievers. A man who challenges them and tells them, come and I show you who the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel is. As Elijah does my life portray that. And if it doesn't, then I am living a lie. If it doesn't, then I am living a life of contradiction. I am faith. Does my life portray faith, the faith I have in Christ? Or in everything, do, do I see lack? Do I see failure? Do I see being defeated? Or I see faith in Christ? You know your name. Does your name portray what you are supposed to be? Or you are living the opposite? I know if they gave you a name that uh, you don't like it, if they gave you a name of maybe... Uh, dryness, monyao, they gave you a name that shows failure in the spirit, you can change that. But you find ourselves, we are being labeled, or rather our names are so good, but the life we are living doesn't reflect our character. Eh? Our successes in life, they don't portray the way our name is. If that is our case, then it says that we are living a life of contradiction, we are living a lie. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor what's your name. Probably you might know their names. Uh, you might not know, but is that name portraying, reflecting your character? And if it's not, if you are Joseph, then say at the end of this service and continuously in my life, I will live a life of multiplication. If you are grace, then say that my life will show grace, not disgrace. If you are faith, then say that your life will show faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Another area where uh, uh, there, there, there are 
there might be a contradiction might be shown is in the area that you are living in, the name of the area that you are living in. Where do you live? You live in Machakos. What does Machakos or Masaku, what does it mean? Uh, you live in uh, Katalembo. What does Katalembo stand for? You live in Kenya, Israel. You live in Kanani. Kanani, a land flowing with honey and milk. But then your life does not show such kind of abundance. Your life is showing the opposite of that. Then there is a contradiction. There is a lie that you are living and you need to live and portray the good of the land. Because the Bible says that we shall eat the good of the land. Praise the Lord. So if the land, uh, like the, the way the Bible records that, the, the, the land is like it feeds or it, it eats its own people and you live in such a land. When you believe in God and you know the God you serve, you have an opportunity to change that area, to change that situation. Praise the Lord. They called Elisha and they, they told him there, there, there is water here but it produces death. In our area, this uh, water produces death. Come and heal this uh, water. So it means that you yourself as a believer, you can change the name of that area and you live the way you want to live and you live the way God has prescribed for your life. Say amen. There are many, many um, funny names. Like there's a, there's a name I had when I was growing up. Uh, Londokwe. Where is Londokwe? In Makweni. So it was called Londokwe. Mweso. <laughs> and there are people living in that area. But you see, if, if you are not careful, you will, your life will portray that name. Your life will portray that name. Again, when we were growing up, uh, there's a song we used to sing as little uh, boys. We, we were saying, go up and up and up. Uh, we were imitating, I think the weaver bird. Modon is the one called the weaver bird. We were imitating it and saying, toy, 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 toy. and then, then the statement is, Ndia see. Sasa, I don't want to mention that the name of that place. But the, the place that you are living in, if it is Canaan, may your life portray such a, a character. May your life show that you are living in an area of abundance. And if the area is not an area of abundance, maybe they called it a name out of pain. You can change that name and say, I will live in this area and I will not face pain in my life in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The third area where we can live a life of contradiction is the church that you belong to. The church that you attend, the, the faith that you subscribe to, the, the name, the name of the church that you belong to. That's an area that you can face or rather have a life of contradiction or live a lie. Just an example, deliverance church. You are in deliverance church. Does your life show somebody who has been delivered, who has been taken out of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God? And then we come home. We are in CCI Nema. Now, is your life portraying CCI Nema? Or when we look at your life, we see some, some loopholes that don't look like Nema. Nema stands for grace. Have we seen grace in your life or we are seeing disgrace? What are we seeing in your life? You attend uh, Sunday services and you tell reverend and the church leadership that I belong to this place. I belong to this church. This is my church. I, I do not have any other. And then I ask you, is your life portraying Nema? Is your life portraying grace? So evaluate your life and when you look at your life and you find that your life doesn't show grace, then you know you are living a life of contradiction. You are living a lie and that lie must stop in Jesus' name. Say amen. Praise the Lord. Give us verse 2. Give us verse 2 uh, of where we were reading Acts chapter 3 verse 2.
Now, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Now, mark the word that is used here. What was the name of this gate? The name was called Beautiful. And then we find a man sitting at the Beautiful gate, and he is crippled. And in addition to that, he is begging. Crippled, a crippled beggar sitting at the beautiful gate. So when you look at your life, attending CCI Nema, attending this church, subscribing to, uh, to this church, then you ask yourself, could it be I'm sitting at the beautiful gate and my life is not beautiful? Could it be I'm attending CCI Nema and my life doesn't show grace. The grace that flows on this altar, it doesn't reach me. The blessings that are proclaimed in this place, they do not find me. And I ask myself, where have I messed? It is because you are living a lie. You are living a life of a contradiction. And this lie must stop. Say this lie must stop. This lie must stop. So it means that you have chosen to stay at the gate instead of getting in, entering to the house of God and hearing and partaking of the blessings that are happening in that place. You are sitting at the gate. Yes, the gate is beautiful. Your life should be beautiful. You should portray beauty. You should meet the beautifier of life who is Christ himself. But you have chosen. You might not know. You might not know. You might not be aware. But that's why this word has come to us. I might not be knowing, but truth be told, I might be sitting at the gate. I'm inside. I'm hearing. But I am sitting at the gate. The gate is beautiful, but my life is not beautiful. Then it means that I have not fully embraced what is happening here. I'm just a member of CCI Nema by name, but my heart is not here. My heart is here partially because I have not gotten into the program of the church. I have not gotten uh, and accepted the leadership of the church. I have not bowed down and submitted to the leadership of the church and followed the programs and the things that servants of God tell us in this place. That is what sitting at the beautiful gate, that is what it means. I have not, my heart is not there fully. It's like I am thinking uh, of other things. It's like I am thinking of another church. It's like I am thinking of another fellowship. It's like I feel I do not belong there. If you feel like that, you are sitting at the beautiful gate and you will never move on until you realize you are sitting at the gate and get into the house of God and then you meet the blesser who is Christ Jesus. Say amen. It means I am not fully focused to the church and to what is happening. It means that I am giving the church divided attention. I am giving the work of Christ or the kingdom of God divided attention. When God requires that we submit to him fully. When God requires we give him full attention. Imagine you are speaking to someone and they are, they are on their other businesses. They are doing their own things and you are trying, you are trying to, to tell them something. Then they are giving you divided attention. You feel bored. You feel discouraged. That is what we are, we are doing. That's what we are doing. We are giving God divided attention. Our hearts are not here fully. Our minds are not here fully. It means that I am getting half-baked. I am not getting fully what is happening in the altar. Am I getting what is happening in this place? The full package or I am getting half of it. 
Have I said yes, I will follow the programs that are laid down? Have I said yes, I will fully focus because in my mind I do not have any other place. In my mind I do not have I do not know there are many churches yes, but I do not uh, I'm not a member of those other churches. Is my mind fully focused and saying that I belong here and I belong here and for the time that God will give me, I am here and I am here fully. All you are here half. Are you half baked? Are you hearing the word alone? At what time do you find yourself in the house of God? Do you take part in intercessory? Do you take part in, uh, in praise and worship? Or probably you, 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 take, you participate in praise and worship and then after that you disappear. Or you participate in intercessory after that you disappear. You participate, you hear the word because you've come late and then you disappear. You come out, yes, you love God. I'm not saying that you don't love God. Sure, you love God. But you are giving him attention that is divided. You will receive the word well, fully and embrace it. But there is something that you missed for that day. There are prayers that you missed for that day. There, there is a service that did not happen to you. And when we come to the service, we need to come to the service and be fully serviced. But you received half of it. Divided attention. You are not fully uh, focused. But may you make a decision this morning and going forward that my heart will be there fully. It is Nehemiah. I want to see Nehemiah in my life. I want to see grace in my family. I want to see grace in my marriage. I want to see grace upon my children. I want to see grace in my business. I want to see grace in my area of work. Then it means fully submit, fully focus. Your eyes, your mind, your heart be on this place. Praise the Lord. Your heart and everything be in the place that you worship in. Be in the church that you worship in. That is, the, uh, that is how you will be receiving and drawing from the altar. The blessings that are pronounced on this altar, they will come to you. But blessings might be pronounced, but they do not reach you. They are trying to reach you, but you are unreachable. Reason being, you are not focused. You are not fully focused to what is happening. You are living a life of contradiction. You are living a life of lie. Praise the Lord. Can you just say from today, I will no longer live a life of lie. Live a life of contradiction. Number four, we are going to look uh, at another area where we can be, uh, we can live a life of contradiction a life of a lie. And that is being anointed but broke. Anointed but broke. Anointed but broke. That's another contradiction. Give us uh, the verse that is saying uh, where Peter looked at that man and told them Silver or gold I do not have. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Now, I, I just want us to look it at this, uh, uh, this side. I don't know how Peter and John were living, but there's a pronouncement they have made here. That silver or gold I do not have. Probably they meant that silver and gold to help you, I do not have. Or they meant kabisa, I do not have. Let's look it at that angle that they didn't have silver or gold. They didn't have money, but they were serving God. They didn't have silver or gold, but they were going to the temple, to the house of God. 
every day, three in the afternoon, they are found there worshiping and praising God. They are healing the sick. They are raising the dead. People are getting saved. People are getting delivered through their hands, but they might be broke. We live a life of contradiction. We live a lie when we serve God, but we are broke. We serve God, but we have nothing. We serve God after a powerful sermon. I deliver a powerful sermon. I deliver a moving sermon, but after that I go and beg because I have nothing, because I am broke. Even the clothes that I wear, probably I borrowed from someone. I borrowed fair to come to church. I am anointed. I am preaching the gospel, but I am broke. Living a life of contradiction. From today we declare that we should shall serve the Lord and have money. Say amen. Money is not bad. We shall serve the Lord. We shall live for the Lord. We shall uh, spread the gospel and at the same time we shall have money. We shall have properties in the name of Jesus Christ. We will serve God and prosper at the same time. Prosperity is not bad. Prosperity as long as it is not drawing you out of the presence of God. Prosperity is good because if you prosper the work of the kingdom will prosper if we prosper we shall stand with the church if we have money we shall stand with the with any project that is pronounced on this place we shall serve him we shall be anointed and at the same time we shall carry money we shall carry dollars praise the lord Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 6. Kindly give us Deuteronomy 15 and verse 6. We will not lack as we serve God. It breaks the heart when I love the Lord too much. So much. When I have fully given myself to the service to kingdom of God. But then I am broke. I am a beggar. I am borrowing. I'm living on handouts. It pains. It pains. Deuteronomy 15 verse 6. For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised. Say the Lord will bless me as he has promised. I will lend to many nations but I will borrow from none. I will rule over nations but none will rule over me. Put your hands and celebrate Jesus this morning. We will not be anointed and broke at the same time. This is a promise that the Lord has given us. That he, he will bless us as he has promised. We will lend to many nations. That means we will have abundance in our, in our tents. We shall have uh, money in banks. We shall carry money. We shall prosper. We shall do well. Our businesses will do well. Our careers will prosper. And at the same time, that will not take us out of God. We will stay. We will remain on the altar. We will submit to God, but carry, uh, carry the anointing and also carry money, carry wealth. Wealth is a promise for people of God. Praise the Lord. If we are blessed with money, with a lot of property, with wealth, then the kingdom of God will prosper. And that is why the enemy uses this as a weapon. He will ensure that you lack. Because when you lack, when you have nothing, you will not spread the gospel. You have a mission, you have been called maybe to Maua. But your heart, you want to go, but you do not have money even for fair. That means that the kingdom of heaven will not spread. Somebody who was to be saved by you, by the word that you're going to release, they will not be saved. Their salvation might be postponed because you lacked money. Somebody needs to hear this word probably through the media, but because the church might not have the capacity, we, you might not reach that person because you are broke. Say, I shall be anointed and prosper. I will prosper. I shall not be anointed and be broke in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 
Yes, prosperity is the portion of uh, is the is our portion for us who serve God and believe in our God. And may God change our situation around. If there is anywhere we are struggling financially, may, we, may he come through for us in the name of Jesus Christ. As July ends and as we keep on focusing on him, may he come through for us. If we are struggling financially, we are not able to pay rent and it's end month. May God come through for us in the name of Jesus. And may the solution he will provide, may it be permanent in Jesus' name. Let's go back to where, uh, where we are coming from in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 8. Take us back there, Acts chapter 3, uh, from verse 1. And then we, we get a few things there. Peter and John, they are going to the house of God. And as they are going, there is a man who has always been there. The Bible doesn't record for how long this man was in that situation. But there was a man sitting at a beautiful gate, crippled from birth. So we do not know at what age he was taken to the, to the beautiful gate, but he was always there begging for money. When he saw people who were prayerful, where he could see people get into the house of God, if uh, he looks at your suit, he knows a thousand is coming. When he looks at uh, the way you've done your, your hair, he knows five thousand is coming. Mm -hmm. Sitting at the beautiful gate. And then it reaches a time that Peter and John says, no, 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 this is, this is enough, this is enough. We have been in this situation. Uh, maybe yesterday they looked at, the, the beggar looked at me, I had nothing. So Peter and John says, this lie must stop. And this man must wake up and go into the house of God and praise the Lord. Because he is staying outside at the beautiful gate. Not getting in. Not knowing that inside is where the blessings are. We will no longer live a life of contradiction once we fully focus on God and not on people. This man was focusing on people, looking at people who will help him, looking at the suit people going to the house of God are wearing, looking at the cars that are being driven and seeing that I will get food for today. But when this man stopped focusing on that, and focused on God, on what Peter and John was re were releasing, is the moment that his life changed. So any moment we stop focusing on men, and focus on God alone, is when our financial struggle will end. Any time we focus on God alone, is when our names will portray our character. Any moment that we focus on God is when the blessings of the house of God will flow to us because our minds, our hearts are fully in that place. Say amen. That crippled beggar, he remained in that situation as long as he focused on the pockets of men. We will remain and struggle as long as we will focus on politicians and saying that uh, after any election, things might be better. We will keep on struggling. Instead of making our own environment and our own microeconomics, we are looking at the economy, the, the entire economy, and we forget that we, God, God creates a Goshen for us. Praise the Lord. We forget that he creates a condition that is favorable and conducive for us and not the way the world goes. Because if we choose the way the world goes, we will be destroyed and we will lack and we will continue struggling. But when we focus on him alone is when our situations will change. John chapter 5 and verse 6 to 7. There was another man there who was always focusing on men and focusing on people until Jesus comes. And this man still is focusing on this man. He is looking at Jesus not like the son of David, the son of man, but he is looking at him like any other man. And he, he, he is asked, do you want to get uh, healed? Do you, want, uh, do you want to receive your healing? You've been in this situation for 38 years. Do you want to change? And this man says, kindly take us there. 
We are there. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in the condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? What was the answer he gave? Sir! Hmm? He called him, sir! The invalid replied, invalid for being uh, that guy who is uh, not well and well. I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is tired. While I am trying to get in, someone else gets down ahead of me. This man was imagining because my people are not around when the angel of God comes and stirs the pool and stirs the water there are no people my friends or my relatives are not there to throw me in so that I be the first one to get healed he starts giving Jesus the same story do you want to get well you see I even do not have an HIV I do not have money I do not have cover but you've been asked, do you want to be well? Because there are things that you are focusing on and then Jesus comes, he wants to change your situation, but you are still giving him stories. He knows those stories. He knows, by the way, he knows all the stories, so you don't need to tell him. He knows everything. So this man starts explaining how for, the, for, for all the that eight years he has been there, people are coming, getting healed, crippled are getting healed, and then I have been in that situation. He tells Jesus, no one to throw me in. He wasn't asked, can I hold your hand and throw you in? He was asked, do you want to get well? But because Jesus is God, he offered a solution to the man. May God offer a solution to any question that we have in our lives. We will not focus on those stories. Yes, they are good and history is good. But we will not focus on those stories. We will focus on God and tell him, yes, I want to get well. Yes, I want to prosper. Yes, I want my children to go to the best schools. Yes, I want to walk in prosperity. I want to walk in health. I want to walk healed. I don't want to serve God and at the same time, I say pain, I cry, I cry pain, I cry infirmities, I cry diseases following me and my family and my children and my people. No, when we fully focus on him, he asks us, Anatoliza, do you want to prosper? We say yes. Let us not say no. You see, we do not know people in big companies. You see, the CEO is not my friend. You see, the CEO even doesn't come from my tribe. You see now this business, the economy is too tough. You see this business, people are even not buying. You see people are looking at me. It's like they are envying me. No, God doesn't want you to concentrate on those stories. He wants you to focus on him. Praise the Lord. This man, when he focused on Peter and John and on the word that Peter and John uh, released over his life is when, is when uh, his situation was changed. When we discover that we are sitting at a beautiful gate and our lives are not beautiful is when we will get into the house of God and meet the beautifier. Say amen. And then we will sing that my beautifier has taken away my shame, taken away my pain. He has made me just like him. Praise the Lord. And by the way, that's another contradiction. Because if, if God says, if Christ says that we are seated with him in heavenly places above principalities, and then you find that principalities are above us, demons are above us, now, that is, that is the, the, the trick, or rather the ignorance that the enemy will use. You do not know that you are seated in heavenly places. Above those demons is when you will see demons and tremble. Is when you will see witches and tremble. But once you realize that Christ wants to make us just like him, just like he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He wants us to sit in authority. That is why we, where, where, where we read Deuteronomy 15, 6. It said that we will rule over nations and not nations rule over us. Say amen. When Christ visits, he beautifies our lives. And then after that, verse 8 of Acts chapter 3. 
when God visits, because we have said no to this lie. We have said no to living a life of limitation. We have said no, I will no longer sit and stay at the beautiful gate and my life is the opposite of that. I will jump on my feet and I will begin to walk. I will live like the way a Joshua should live. I will live the way a, a Joseph should live. I will live the way faith should live. I will live the way favor should live. Praise the Lord. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then there is something else he realized. He went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and praising God. So he has realized my condition has changed. I have met my beautifier and I will no longer sit at the beautiful gate with a life that is full of ashes, with a life that is full of trash. I will come out of the beautiful gate and I will get into the house of God and because of the joy and because of the happiness and because of that miracle, I will get in, I will jump, I will walk and I will praise the Lord. Say amen. Once we say no to this lie, once we say no to living a life of contradiction, once we say no to living a lie, we will fully get into the house of God. We will fully focus on the things of God and then our lives will be transformed. At that instant, this man's life was transformed. At that instant, Jesus told him, rise up and walk. Don't tell me stories that there is no one to throw me into the pool. No. Just rise and walk because your miracle has been released because you have fully focused on me. Hallelujah. Verse 10. We are concluding at verse 10. They recognize him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. I don't know why the, uh, the Bible is keeping on repeating beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There is emphasis on that. And you see, there is nothing uh, in the word of God that is in vain. This is language that is well uh, chosen. Uh, somebody somewhere said that even the punctuation marks in the Bible, they are deliberate. They are very deliberate. So they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Somebody say, I will be a wonder to many. Say, I will be a wonder to many as you rise on your feet. I will be a wonder to many after I have fully focused on God, after I have fully focused on Christ. I will be a wonder to many. I am a wonder because I will no longer live a life of contradiction. Start speaking these words and declare I will no longer live a life of contradiction. I will no longer live a lie. If my name is Jesus, Joseph, indeed the Lord will multiply. Indeed the Lord will increase. Indeed the Lord will surely bless me. And if my name is pain, the Lord will transform it. The Lord will change it from pain to glory, from pain to joy. The Lord will change that name in the name of Jesus Christ. If they call you pain, Mephibosheth, the Lord will transform that name in the name of Jesus Christ we are declaring that as we fully focus our minds our hearts on things of God as we fully focus on you God as we serve you our master as our hearts our minds and everything that is within us is on this altar we shall be a wonder to many they shall look at us and ask us what happened to which preacher did you go to who, who prayed over you to which prophet did you go to but you will say no 
I realized I was sitting at the beautiful gate uh, and my life wasn't beautiful and I said enough is enough uh, and I said this life um, this life must stop uh, and I said uh, I will no longer live a life of contradiction uh, I will get into the house of God uh, I will receive my miracle I will receive my blessings uh, I will receive my victory in the name of Jesus Christ uh, Lord God Almighty we are confessing we shall be a wonder to many they that knew us will wonder what happened to us but we will have a testimony that it came a time I said no to this lie it came a time I said no to contradiction it came a time I said no to live in a lie and that is when my miracle came nobody prayed over me I realized the problem was within me I realized the problem was not my parents I realized the problem was not the church I attend I realized the problem was not the fellowship I realized the problem was not my friends the problem was within me and when I realized that was my problem I took a step I took a step I took a step I focused on Jesus I focused on God I focused on the Creator he beautified my life he is our beautifier he beautified my life and the next moment when I walk out of the house of God I will pass by the beautiful gate I might even decide to sit there because at that time my life will be beautiful because at that time there will be no contradiction because at that time I will not be living a lie because at that time what is expected the expectation is what I am living the reality comes to me when I realize when I realize I've been living a lie and I say the lie must stop and I went into the house of God I fully focused on matters of the kingdom I say nothing will distract me I say nothing will take me out of his presence I say no stories will matter stories history will not matter where I am coming from will not matter what will matter is my focus on Jesus is my focus on God is my focus on the Creator somebody raise your voice and pray and declare in the name of Jesus Christ I will live a blessed person I will live a blessed life seated high above seated in heavenly places above principalities above shame above shame above shame above shame in the name of Jesus seated in heavenly places above demons above principalities above sicknesses above failure in the mighty name of Jesus this lie must stop this lie must stop as I get to Augusta I will not carry the struggles of July I will not carry the pain of July because this lie is stopping because this lie is stopping in the mighty name of Jesus whatever the enemy has lied concerning my life it is stopping 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 in the name of Jesus worship team and magi you lead us in my beauty fire has taken away my shame and my pain and he is making my life beautiful he is making me just like him he is taking away the shame he is taking away the pain they have laughed at me because I was sitting at the beautiful gate not realizing I was sitting where the blessings are and my life was not portraying those blessings Taken away my pain, he's taken away my shame, made my life so beautiful, my beautiful fire is 
taken away my shame. He's taken away my pain. You made me just like you. My beautifier. My beautifier. He's taken away my shame. He's taken away my pain. You made my life so beautiful. to us in a very clear manner this morning living a lie. <clears throat> it's not that we do not know where we are. It's not that we do not know those lies and contradictions that have become description of our lives. The book of Revelations, it says, You are this, but you are not. This man, probably, if anybody would ask, Where can I find you? Then, the physical address would read something like beautiful. No one would have easily concluded ah, this man, everything about him is beautiful. Because even the estate he lives, the place you find him is beautiful. But look at him. His life was in tatters, was in shame. I'm imagining the many disappointments. Because I believe it was not just Peter and John who disappointed him by saying we have nothing. 
that must have been the experience this man was treated to many, many other times. And you know, it is human. When you approach somebody, you imagine they are in a position, they have the capacity to assist you in whatever need you have. Many times, as I said last Sunday, some of us even feel so bad you delete somebody's contact because you are saying this one the other day I put them in my group. They kept quiet. They, they never commented. They never contributed. So you hate them. That, that hateful spirit uh, grips you without your consciousness. So this man is at the beautiful gate, but his life was not beautiful. I thank God because a defining moment came for him and he made a decision. I will no longer live a lie. And I thank God for Peter and John They really wanted this man to focus on God. It's like, look at us. But as you look to us, we are looking to God. That's why although we are fellow humans like you, and our pockets have no coin at the moment, but we will still give you a solution. Nevertheless, Brethren, this is the kind of Christians we must be. That even when we are humanly limited, then we know beyond what is physical. What is physical is I have no money. But I will direct you to the one who has money. I will direct you to the one who has said in Haggai 2.8, Silver and gold are mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And in the name of that one, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Did the man walk? Did the man rise? I want to show you the two sides as we conclude. This man showed him Jesus and his life was changed forever. But on the side of the man unto whom a miracle has happened, the man realizes that these ones who have brought me solution, there is a place they are going and there is a place they always go. I will go there so that even me, I can get what they have gotten there. And from tomorrow, I will be a solution to others who are living a lie. Hallelujah. I, it's only that the Bible, John 21 says, everything that happened, if it were to be written for us, even the whole earth cannot contain the literature. It doesn't have space. But I'm imagining if this man, whose name is not even given, but his story is given, I am sure the following day, if he found another person at the beautiful gate begging, I am sure he never left him the way he was. He will tell him, silver and gold I do not have, but that which I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man would walk in that miracle. The man said, I am not going to concentrate on the miracle. I will concentrate on the one who has done the miracle. He went to worship God. That's where many of us mess. I have said many times, it's a, really a sad affair. We pray to God and God comes to our help. We meet Peter and John 
and through the grace of God, they perform miracles on us. We rise from our crippled state. We walk, but we walk and others run, not into the temple where God of Peter and John, where God of miracles, where God of solution is worshipped, but we walk to the market to look for money now. We rush to the farm to cultivate and make money. We rush to friends and show them that we are now walking. This man realized if there is a place, my first destination is to the house of God. Where this God who has done this miracle, this God who has changed my life, where he is worshipped. Which miracles and what miracles has God done to us? Which was our first stop? May God forgive us for our foolishness. May God forgive us for our lack of knowledge. May God forgive us for going to the wrong places after he has done miracles for us. And may we always Remember him. Many Christians are still struggling with tithe. When God has done that miracle of our job, they don't know the first place this money should land is into the kingdom of God. That God who has done that miracle. That God who has made your life beautiful, beautiful because you now clothe well, you eat well, you take care of your family well. They are taken because of the one who has done it for you. If you are saying, Lord, help me to no longer live a lie. Lift up that hand as we pray this morning. Even those that are following us online, this is a message that has come in a very, very clear way. And I believe God is speaking to us we are praying let me tell you there are places where we must move out if a change has to happen if a miracle has to happen we must change our attitude when this man changed focus from Peter and John from wanting handouts from people there few coins Sometimes the coin's not coming. Living in bitterness with people and all that. And he believed the report of the Lord. That I will believe in God. In the name of the Lord. This man's life changed. And changed forever. Father we thank you that you are. God who has spoken to us this morning. Father we come to you in repentance. Because of our foolishness. Because of the many mistakes we have made. One of which is to focus on men and women. Human beings. People. Employers. Friends. We have looked at them. But we have remained at the beautiful gate. Still begging. Ashaming you. As if we didn't have a father. As if our father was defeated to take care of our needs. Forgive our begging spirit and behavior. And Lord change us forever. Help us to focus unto you. Help us to focus unto you. Give us the faith that this man had. That he did not hate Peter and John because they didn't have money. But he loved the next part of the story. That he accepted the name of Jesus and the power thereof and therein to change his situation. I pray that Lord this morning, everybody that is changing focus from man and is putting that focus unto you. I pray they will not be put to shame. I declare that shame comes to an end right now. That pain comes to an end. That oh Lord, disappointment and embarrassment comes to an end to everyone this morning.
that is taking a decision, that is taking, oh Lord, a step to focus unto you. You did it to that man many years ago. I believe you are doing it to us. And Father, once you do the miracle, I pray you give us to focus unto your house, unto your kingdom, to worship you with our substances, to love you with what you've given to us. Even that good health that you give to us when you heal us, May we serve you with good health. May we serve you with that energy. May we serve you with those skills. May we serve you with those gifts, oh Lord. Even with those finances. With the, the wealth that you've given to us. I pray that dear Jesus, you will help us. And you will minister to us. And that our lives will never, never be the same again. Thank you for hearing this prayer and thank you for granting it because we receive your will and purpose. We receive our transformation. We receive our miracles. We receive, oh Lord, our newness. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen. Glory to God. Give Jesus a mighty clap. And it's time now to do what one of the things we do in the house is to worship this king. Is to build his kingdom with our wealth. And it's time to give right now our tithes and offerings in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As the singers continue leading us, our beautifier, uh, uh, our beautifier, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's bring our offerings in the presence of the Lord right now. We are telling the Lord we recognize you are the one that has done it. And so that which we have uh, gotten, yes, we will worship the Lord with it. You can display also the till number for those that are away and would want to worship God with us here in their substances in Jesus' name. My beautiful love, you've taken away my shame. You've taken away my faith. You made me just like you, my beautiful My beautiful you've taken away my shame. You've taken away. Father, we thank you for allowing us an opportunity to worship you with our substances. I pray and declare blessings upon the givers. So that I've given offerings and their tithes. I pray that you will bless them. And may these offerings and sacrifices speak for them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that Lord of glory, their faith will not be put to shame. They have given not out of abundance, but out of faithfulness. And I pray that Lord shall be well with them as you rebuke the devourer on their behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We want to bid by um, to those that have been following us uh, online. May God bless you so much. Um, and may you have a great week uh, and as you begin the new month as you can see we are beginning our prayer and fasting tomorrow first uh, till Friday and we crown it with a Kesha uh, an overnight uh, prayer meeting on Friday uh, here in church May God bless you. Amen.
Thank you so much. Uh, praise and worship. Thank you. 